Hi everyone, Sharon here. Today I'm going to do a review for uh, some watercolors I just received. They are the Prima Marketing Watercolor Confections. There are sets of 12 and you can buy three different sets. I just got the Tropical set because it seems like these colors are more along the lines of normal palette colors and the other ones are a little bit different. One's called Cupcake, I think and it's more of a um, pastel looking set. And then there's another one, I forget the name of it, Delectable or something like that. And I think that that palette is more earth tones, like browns and beiges and um, maybe for portraits or whatever. So, so I got this one and there are 12 colors in the palette. It comes with its own metal palette. And that was part of the reason I bought this because to get a metal palette like this, you're going to pay more than the $20 that these 12 watercolors cost me in the palette. So I thought, why not just get this one? Um, I, di I did do a video on the DIY watercolor palette um, a little while back, and I was saying how I didn't really like this palette. Um, and the reason for that was because when I open it up, this side drops way down and there's not much of a lip on it. So the, the color will just, you know, drop all over my clothes or whatever. So I wasn't real happy with it, but I'm still trying to figure out a way I can fix it and use it. Um, so anyway, let's get on to this one. Uh, like I said, this is, these watercolors are by Prima Marketing and they are made in Korea. The Prima Marketing Company is in Chino, California though. So I'm not sure if these watercolors are real transparent or or what. Um, it says on the box here, watercolor confections are artist grade, high quality, and highly pigmented watercolor pans. Watercolor confections are sized perfectly for artists on the go. These professional grade paints provide bright, intense, smooth, and long lasting colors that will work beautifully for any art or mixed media project. Is it mixed media art? That didn't make sense. Anyway, so let's open it up. And this is what the palette looks like. Um, it's got the ring on the bottom so that you can put your hand through and hold them without dropping them. Uh, there's a little sticker on the front that tells you what set it is, the tropical set. And then um, the pan opens just like the big one I showed you. And the nice thing about it is that this lays straight. This one hangs down a little bit, but that doesn't bother me so much because it's got such a high lip on it. I'm not worried about the color dribbling all over me. And I still might try and figure out how to bend it so that it doesn't go down so far because it seems a little loose here. I don't know if you can see that. See how loose it is? But anyhow, this, one, this side doesn't do that. It's got a pin running through it or something. I don't know. Anyway, these are the colors. They come individually wrapped. They look so pretty. But I think they're more intense than these colors from what I've seen other people doing. Now, it also comes with a little card, which I am going to um, put my swatches on and then I'm going to laminate it with my Xyron machine um, This little Xyron machine which has a magnetized backing on the laminate so that I can stick it onto my palette like I did with my DIY palette I made I put a um, Magnetic backing on it in the laminate it comes with the lamp it comes with it that way in the Xyron machine so I don't lose my little swatch thing. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, the other thing I wanted to show you on this was the tray does lift out. Um, so if you wanted to do something else and put different pans on the inside, you could, or you could take these out and put full pans in and you could probably fit, fit some full pans in the center too. I don't have any out right now, but um, I'm sure you could fit a pan in the center too, a few of them, or six more half pans in the center. But um, this has these little tabs on the sides, and I'm going to stretch them out a little bit so that 
when I put it in here, it'll kind of lock into place. So if I do that, it locks it into place and it won't fall out so easily. And I have a little travel brush. This is my, my favorite little travel brush. It's an Escoda Versatile um, Size 8 brush. And it has an awesome point on the end of it. Look at the point on that. Really nice brush. So anyway, um, I want to see if it'll fit in here. I tried to fit it in earlier, and it fits kind of on an angle. But, oh, I got it in. Perfect. So now I can um, put my travel brush in there, and I'll be all set. Can I get it out again? Yeah, I can. So let me go ahead, and we'll unwrap these, and we will check out the colors. Okay. So now, let's go ahead and unwrap this set. See how hard these are to get out of here. These pans are all individually wrapped. They have the numbers on the back, which will coincide also with the numbers on the palette. I don't know if they have names. Oh my goodness, it's so hard to see. But I'm going to go ahead and unwrap them. They do not. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a permanent marker and grab a Sharpie or something here, and I'm going to put the number of the color right on the bottom here. You'd think they would have put that on there, but... So that was lucky number 13. Let that sit for a bit. Okay, and this one is 14. blowing on them to try and dry this quickly so that it doesn't rub right off in the palette. And this is 15, so it must go on, yeah, 13 through 24. So I will go ahead and get this all set up, and we will meet back. And I think I'll just give these a little spray. You know, there's actually extra room in this palette, too. And I was checking it out. If I push these way over, I can fit another half pan in here. So I can put in two more half pans and end up with 14 colors if I want. So I might add a Payne's Gray to it and... Um, Maybe one of my other favorite colors. So, so let's go ahead and start. Ah, oh, palette, duh. What am I thinking? Yeah, I need to scrub this palette out because you see how the color just wants to trail and dissipate. That's because this coating needs to be rubbed down. Sometimes just soap and water work, but hmm, I don't think that's going to work for a gray very well. Uh, maybe. Nah, not really. I guess it's more of a greenish gray. It comes out to be. There's a lot of yellow in that brown. I um, finished doing the swatches on this, and I'm cutting it out of the video because it turned out so bad. This little card that they gave me um, has almost like a whoops a plastic type of a coating on it and it, it was just really awful and flimsy so what I did was I made a new one out of watercolor paper 
and I put all of the colors on it. And that is that is a true wash of color. I didn't glaze it over and over and over again. That is just how the color comes off. And it came out so much smoother on here than over here. This just turned out horribly. So I couldn't get it to to stay put. So anyway, I just remade the same card and rounded the edges off with my little rounder thingy. And what I'm going to do now, you can watch me laminate it with my magnetic laminator wherever it went. Here it is. Behind my chair on the floor. So this little Xyron machine is so nice and so simple. Basically, um, all I do is I just load it through like this. I'm going to load it through this way, although it wastes a lot. You should do it long ways. And then I'm just going to run it through. You'll see it come out the other side. It wastes so much mag stuff, though. And then I just slice it, and there it is. And then all I got to do is cut it down to size, and it's ready to go on. I'm going to do it with the scissors, though, because I'm trying to make sure I don't go past the edge where it seals. You can kind of see the plastic there. Maybe I can push it together with my fingers. That, yeah, that might be it. And then I can get in a little closer to the edge. That works much better. But anyway, Oops, there's a bubble in it right here. Glad I caught that before I um, cut it. Because I don't want a bubble in it afterward. This might be a little too big now to fit in side. But I can always cut it smaller. I, oh, no, I can't because then I will break the seal. Okay, so here it is, all done, all magnetized. And, oh, it fits on the outside just right. Not a problem. See? It sticks just fine. And then on the inside, let's see if I can put it on the inside okay. Uh, yeah, that should work. Yeah, it works. Actually, I might just do it this way. This is where I have a problem because the lip, that's what I was afraid of. But I think if I just go like, oh, ah, I'm going to bend it. I got it stuck. Oh, no, I don't want to ruin this. I finally got one that lays open flat, and I'm going to go ahead and ruin it. Oh, there we go. I guess I better cut that down a little more or not put it there. That side, I can't go any closer on, I don't think. But, well, I'll just do it on here or on the outside. Well, so I'll just put it on the outside. The only thing is, is I may need to remove this sticker so that I can get it to lay better because it wants to lift on this edge because there's a sticker underneath. These magnets aren't super strong, but they do work pretty well for something like this. So I'm happy with the way that turned out. Um, anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and like and comment below. I will be doing a painting very soon with these colors and also with the Gonzai Tombi colors that I did the review on earlier today. Have a great day, everybody.